So today we're going to talk about the laws of exponents. It's important to review this concept before we start talking about the exponential function. Uh, so let's get started on that. Now before I tar start talking about the actual laws, I want to kind of point out a few little tricks that you need to remember. So trick number one is that anything to the power of zero is going to be equal to one. Anything. Always. This all is always the case. Trick number two is when you have anything to the exponent that is negative, you must then place it underneath a fraction. So typically we put one over, then we put in our a and our exponent becomes positive. Similarly, we would do this with a fraction. So if we had a negative exponent on the bottom of our fraction, we would take that and bring it to the top like that. So you have to be comfortable interchanging these. Tip number three is if you have anything to the exponent of one half, you can rewrite that as the square root of that something. So this is our little trick table here. Now let's get to talking about the actual laws of exponents. So the first law is if you have a base, let's say that our base is a to the exponent of m and it's being multiplied with the base a to a different exponent, we would then simplify this by saying base a is equal to, well, we would simplify this by saying that the base a now has an exponent of m plus n. So let's have a little example of this one here. So let's say I had 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 3. This will become 2 to the power of 4 plus 3 which is equal to 2 to the power of 7. Now this will only work if your bases are the same. If you don't have the same base, you cannot use this property. Law number two is similar to this, except instead of a, div a multiplication, we have a division. So we have a to the m being divided by a to the n. And this will become a to the power of m minus n. So let's have a little example. 3 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 2 will become 3 to the power of 5 minus 2, which is 3 to the power of 3. The third law is a distributive law. So if we have two numbers a and b being multiplied together and we have an exponent on the outside of this bracket here. We would distribute this exponent to each of these numbers in here. So this would become a to the m times b to the m. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's say we have 2x to the power of 3. This will become 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3, which you can simplify. 2 to the power of 3 will become 8 and x to the 3. The fourth law is the power of a power. So we have a to the m but this is also raised to the power of n. When you have this occurring, you're going to be multiplying these two exponents together. So it becomes a to the power of m times n. So let's take a look at an ex example here. Let's say that we had 4 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. This will become 4 to the power of 3 times 3, which is 4 to the power of 
9. Now the last law is similar to law 3. Instead of a multiplication, it is a division. So if we have a over b to the power of m, you distribute this exponent to the top and the bottom. So an example is if we have x over y to the power of 2, this becomes x squared over y squared. So let's do a couple of examples. So example one, we have a to the power of one. Remember, if you just have an a, it's to the power of one. We tend to not really write that though. So just erase that. So a to the power of one times a to the power of three to the power of two. Now the first thing we wanna do is figure this out. This is the first step. So we're just gonna leave our a to the power of one alone. This is gonna become a to the power of three times two, which then that becomes a to the power of six. Now we want to do our first law which is a to the power of one plus six, which will give us a to the power of seven. Let's try a second example. So we have a to the power of five over a to the power of seven. We're gonna use law two to start off, which is the subtraction. So a to the power of five minus seven this will give us a negative exponent. Now, we do not want to use negative exponents ever, so we need to make that a positive exponent by putting it as a fraction under one. My mistake, this should be a positive two. So it becomes one over a squared. Let's do another example. Let's do a to the power of one times a to the power of two over a to the power of zero. Now, before we go anywhere with this, there are multiple steps. There are multiple ways that you can solve this. My first thing is I wanna turn this into a one because anything to the power of zero is equal to one. And anything over one is just equal to that anything. So this simplifies to this simply. Now we're gonna use our first law. We're gonna have our a to the one multiplied by a to the two. So it becomes a to the power of one plus two. And that will give us a to the power of three. Thank you for listening, and I will see you guys next time.